Hi, I'm Alex, and today we are talking about what could be the best movie I saw in 2017, just because I saw Jumanji a year later. Jack's Black yes, queen! was the highlight of my year. Returning to it, original writing by Stephen Keenan, one of my favorite things about this story is how it combines the general horror with the plot of adventure. Because it is a very complicated thing to do. They are both physical, and it is easy to let one dominate the other rather than complement them. Plot and genre are not the same. The plot is the vendor of the story, and genre are the expectations and elements that people are expecting. The adventure plot is full of action. The protagonist will embark on a journey in search of something they want. This plot is about the travel. The genre of horror implies the existence of a monster, creature, or something supernatural. The main focus is to provoke fear in the viewer. Being a physical plot and a physical genre, they focus on what the character does more than what happens inside them. Therefore, we do not see such prominent character development. We can see them change, but this is not the main purpose. It's the action. The transcendence of the story has been due to the symbolisms. From place, from character, and thanks to this adaptation, we can add the loser. Let's begin with the structure. We will use my favorite, the zigzag paradigm, which is based on giving to the inciting incident one out of its own and dividing the climax act into three. But we will make a couple of adjustments. In this graphic, they start with their own introduction. They will have a personal inciting incident and then an inciting incident combined. Yes, two inciting incidents. And the last four acts, they will have them together. Sort of like a broom. First act. Introduction. In this act, we need to know the characters, the villain, the place, the time. You can remember better with the trick of the five W's. Let's begin with the characters. Seven is a big number for main characters. Remember, it is dangerous to have more than one main character. We fix this with a protagonist who stands out above all to prevent the story from losing the narrative impulse. If you have been watching my videos, you will remember that the narrative impulse is literally what impulses the story for war. Bill is this character, but what makes him special? Or how he prevents the story from slowing down? Very simple. His objective is different from the others. One with greater way that justifies the risky action of the character. And we come to the first change with the book. George's disappearance. The decision Bill must take in the story are based on the possibility of finding his little brother. It is a noble objective that make us aspire for the character and to value the risk he takes. In the book, Georgie was always dead from the beginning. Bill was motivated to find Pennywise in part for revenge. And revenge is a complicated plot because there are in play a lot of moral battles that we will talk in the review of the second movie. The change benefits the story. There are already a battle between the adventure plot and the horror genre. The motivation has to change to something that generates more empathy. Come on, a big brother who tries to find his little brother? It is a big deal, especially with the threat that is Pennywise. So the characters. I love it when the writers take the time to write proper characters, especially when they are friends. Everyone is different. Shape, height, color, weight, traits. Bill, the starting and leader. I feel like Stephen King wanted to be easy to recognize Bill's voice when you're reading it. Bill's dialogue are repetitive, making his studying very graphic. In the film, the same thing is achieved when we hear it. It is a very interesting trait of Bill's personality. Suck powers. Beverly, the red-haired rebel. She's the only girl in the group, so it is easy to distinguish her. But I'm grateful that in the film, they add her a personality, and not just the girl of the group. What I really like about the construction of this character is how easily transmit that there is a backstory there. Making interesting characters makes the audience want to know more about them. Richie, the funny guy with glasses. This character carries a complicated task, the comic relief. When the tension is at his peak, this character must intervene and lose the environment a little. Like a tape, if we tighten it more and more without letting it rest, it breaks. Richie avoids that the tension is unbearable for the spectator, and it provides one of the best moments. How do you think Betty feels? Running around these tunnels with only one freaking shoe? 
There is a reason why people laugh at the funerals. Richie as a character is very well built. The jokes are adequate and actually funny. There is a fine line between funny and stupid. Ben, the lonely lover. Every one of the characters is distinguished by personality, as well as by their physique. One of Ben's traits is that he is a big boy. Of course, that's not the only thing that sets apart from the rest. Ben carries the heart of the story. From the beginning, they portray him as a lonely boy that met these new friends and falls in love in the process. And I appreciate this scene for allowing us to see Beverly through Ben's eyes. Do I ship Beverly? Maybe. Just, just a little. Nothing serious. Who am I kidding? I read the book for them. Eddie. The worry sick one. The voice of consciousness. The mom of the group. This character keeps us on our feet, reminding us how irresponsible and dangerous everything is. My mom will have an aneurysm, okay? If she finds out that we're playing down here, I'm serious. Mike, the fighter. This character was a little difficult, because one of the reasons it exists is to demonstrate the inequality that exists in Derry. The book presents Derry in a very different way than the film. It is a terrifying place to live, not just because of Pennywise. The screenwriters were very conscious about this because there are only six children of color in the school. In the film, he has a big play, Stanley, the Fearful. I think he's one of my favorite characters. Yes, it is the fearful of the group who does not want to do things. But thanks to him, we are constantly reminded that this is a scary movie. As I said at the beginning, combining this plot and this genre is a difficult task. Bill is the one who carries the plot of action. You will readily see him really scared. He is the one who is always suggesting the next step, the next crazy action. Stanley, on the other hand, carries the genre of horror. Is generally scared and does not suggest any kind of crazy action. On the opposite, he wants to avoid it. Now, the antagonist. Pennywise, the dancing clown. A clown who has the ability to become what you fear. It is a premise for an amazing villain. It is so overwhelmingly smart. I recently mentioned in another video that you should not show your monster in the first minutes. I left you the link to watch that video. But in this movie, as in the book, it appears in the first scene, and it works. The difference is that his appearance generates more questions than answers. What does a clown do in a sewer? The mystery is not lost. If you are going to show your monster in the first scene, make sure that it generates questions about him. Need and weakness, the creators of empathy. This must arrive before the inciting incident so that I care about the great event that is about to happen to them. Weakness, what they must overcome during the story or at the end. Curious, in this story, the seven protagonists have the same weakness. Also, it's the same thing that makes them friends. They are bully and harass. Need, what the character wants and gets at the end. Sometimes. Before you say something about Richie, I know what you're all thinking, and yes, yes, the thing we learn in the second movie. But this analysis is about the first one, so I will pretend not to know. Introduction to the Fantastic World Derry Oh Derry, a fantastic place to live. A small city with a tragic history that repeats itself every 27 years. So, we can put Derry in a category of a miniature. It is not a big city. The work that Stephen King does in the book to build Derry is an art, because the place always feels like a living entity. Inside Derry, we see particular scenarios. The Nibble House. We can categorize it as a haunted house. I mean, an abandoned crooked black house. I think it's kinda obvious. One of the elements of this haunted house is that in the center hides something evil. In this case, it will be the basement, where is the pit which leads to the sewers, and then the house of Pennywise. And it makes sense that Pennywise lives under the city. If he lives outside, in the forest, or, or a cave, it will take away a lot of the essence that distinguish Derry. Also, I would like to point out that we are in the year 1989. Miniatures are perfect in peers with not many technology. Allows character back with freedom, especially children. 
individual inciting incident, the event that changed everything. After this, the characters can go back to their normal life. Bill, the appearance of Pennywise in his basement, and the realization that he took Georgie. This is the big one. Thanks to this, Bill knows that he needs to go after him. Beverly, the blood in his bathroom. Ben, the story of Derry, the 27 year cycle, and the decapitated boy. Eddie, the leper in Nibold, and his encounter with Pennywise. Mike, the clown with yellow eyes and the burning hands. Stanley, the flourish. Yep, just that. He is a simple boy. Richie, his encounter with Pennywise inside Nibble. This is the last character to receive his inciting incident. The fact that each character must meet Pennywise is dangerous. It is interesting the first time we see how it is presented, but there are seven characters that must have this meeting. The narrative impulse hangs on this. The writer of the story is doing everything possible so that this not slow down. Let me point out something important. The weakness of the characters is not the fear that Pennywise shows them. They are more based on their need. The fear of not getting what they want. I hope you have learned one or many things. Without more to say, beep beep, bye.